I find that us business owners and marketers have a love-hate relationship with analytics. I think mostly it's because it's super complex. And in fact, I recently did a workshop with Mixpanel to integrate analytics onto our Framer site and application. And this ended up being a two-hour series from setup to testing and beyond. It's the same with Google Analytics. I can't stand navigating through its outdated interface. I mean, just pulling up traffic from specific sources feels like a mission to me. And look, to those technical marketers out there, I know a lot of this stuff is second nature to you all. But if you're a business owner or marketer looking for quick and easy insights into your website traffic to help you decide which marketing channels you could double down on, then you'll want to stick around for this video because the Framer team have just launched another game-changing update that you'll not want to miss. Just before I get into it, my name is Omar Fruk, designer turned startup founder. And in this channel, I share my journey, ups and downs of building my startups and trying my best to achieve breakthrough growth. So if you're interested in all of this stuff, then smash that subscribe button. I'll really appreciate it. In the past, Framer's inbuilt analytics has been quite basic, offering only a high level view of visitor data. But now Framer has launched their revamped analytics dashboard and I'm truly impressed. While it won't completely replace comprehensive tools like Mixpanel, PostHog or Amplitude, it is getting quite close. For me, it's perfect for measuring our marketing campaign impact and helping us make quick decisions. Finally, I no longer have to jump across multiple analytic dashboards. Most of what I need is available right here in Framer's latest inbuilt analytics. I think rather than explaining it, let me jump in and show you how it all works. All right, so we're currently inside of our Framer website project for our startup Blitzit. And at the top navigation bar on any Framer project now, you can see this new icon uh, giving you access to the analytics. Uh, previously, this would be buried under the settings section under its own tab. Here, it's really accessible, which is really cool. I think this is a nice touch. When you click this, voila, lo and behold, Here's Framer's revamped analytics dashboard. Isn't it a sight to see, it's so beautiful. First thing, do you notice how fast it was to load? For any of you guys who were using sort of the legacy analytics, which was buried under the settings menu as mentioned, it would take a little bit of time to load. It was useful, but I would often get frustrated clicking that tab, waiting for the stats to load, and then finally actually digging into the data. But this just loads super instantly, right? Which is amazing. So let's go through all the top level stats over here and we'll kind of navigate down to show you exactly what we're getting within this analytics dashboard. So number one, we've got this really cool live visitors counter. I think that's super cool. At any point of day, if you jump into your analytics, you can see how many people are actually viewing your site this very moment, which I think is super cool. I wish our numbers were a little bit higher than two, but you know, I'm quite happy the fact that over the last 30 days, we've had 31,000 visitors, which is pretty decent. Our third stat over here is the total page views, 57K. And then here you can see our bounce rate, 66%, and our average session time, two minutes and seven seconds, which is really good. Now, these last two stats are very important in marketing, as you may know. Uh, for example, average sessions, the fact that it's two minutes and seven seconds is really cool uh, because on average, and this is according to HubSpot, I was just looking this up earlier, on average, time spent across all industries is about 54 seconds, right? So, you know, we're doubling that, which is really good. Uh, I also looked up, you know, sort of the best, and this is obviously top level, you know, according to Google, there could be some better research done, but apparently a healthy bounce rate should be 40% or lower. Now, when you look at our bounce rate, it's about 66%, which may seem a little bit high. Now, when you actually analyze our marketing funnel for Blitzit, it'll all start to make sense. Uh, essentially, we're actually driving most of our traffic through paid ads. Some of this traffic we actually direct to our, our homepage and the call to action in the homepage is simply to download the app. So after they've proceeded to download the app, they don't really have to return back to the website unless for any reason they need to go through our help center and read some of our documentations, which the app itself is quite easy to use and very intuitive. So we actually find that not a lot of people spend too much time in our help center guides. Now the other 50% of our paid ads traffic is going directly to a sales page to buy Blitzit. And again, there the call to action, the only call to action is to pay for Blitzit. And as soon as you click that buy button, it takes you to a Stripe form, which you know prompts you to enter your details and then they buy Blitzit and they get access to it. So in both these scenarios, it's very likely that our users are simply coming to a single page and bouncing because they're either downloading the app or they're paying for the app. Now, considering all of that data, a bounce rate of 66% really isn't bad at all. Now, just below these high level stats, you've got this beautifully laid out graph, as you can see for page views and visitors for the given timeline, which is super handy. And you just have to hover over it to see on individual days, which is super, super handy. Now, as you scroll down, you've got these four quadrants of data. Let's jump into these one by one, starting with sources. So sources over here is of course your traffic sources. You can see 
at Blitzed, our highest source of traffic comes from Google, which is a good sign. I believe this is from our brand keywords, Blitzed app. It's very likely because of the chit chat that's going around different communities that we've published and showcased Blitzed to. Uh, including Product Hunt. We've worked with some Instagram influencers. This includes myself. I've also promoted Blitzit in my personal brand Instagram account, which has around 55,000 followers. Uh, and then I have a couple other stats coming from YouTube, this channel, probably some of our other affiliates and creators that have created content about Blitzit. There's some marketplaces that we're getting traffic from, and it looks like you know people discussing it on Reddit, Facebook, um, you know, other kind of directories and listings and marketplaces like Toolfind is another one that we're starting to grow our traffic from very recently. Now, of course, this particular quadrant is super handy because I can see the potential of each of these individual channels. But the cool thing about this is that not only can I do it by refer, but I can also filter by UTM. Now, for those of you guys who are not familiar with UTMs, UTMs are simple uh, URL parameter that you add at the end of any of your links that essentially allows you to track the success of a particular campaign. So you add specific information in your URL so that you know, okay, where's this traffic coming from exactly? So for example, if I filter by UTM campaign, we can see that I've got a lot of uh, traffic coming from this particular UTM parameter, which is Glorify Blitz It 2, which is actually a email campaign that we ran with a cross collaboration with my other company, Glorify. So we kind of emailed a sort of batch of users that are familiar with myself and my other kind of products. And so we kind of emailed them to take a look at Blitzit. Uh, and then we have Blitzit email four, Blitzit email two. These are just marketing emails that went out probably during Black Friday and other kind of uh, sales that we ran. So again, you can see how handy this is, right? Because we've added UTMs for specific campaigns and this allows us to track the success of those campaigns by monitoring the actual traffic value. And how can this help in the future if you're working with creators, influencers, you know, an affiliate? Just make sure that they add a unique UTM at the end of their link that they push out to their audience so that you, know, you can recognize it in the sources section over here in Framer and see the success of that campaign. So you know, you know if it was worth working with that partner or, or you know, kind of taking on that initiative, right? Uh, and so that's where UTMs are super, super valuable. So we've done it by campaign. You can also do it by UTM source. Uh, this essentially means exactly where it com it's coming from. So those campaigns that you saw earlier, for example, we had like the Glorify Blitzit campaign and the Blitzit email campaigns, etc. All of these are likely uh, sourced by Brevo because we actually use Brevo as our email marketing tool. Then we have some other sources that I don't actually quite recognize. Even the sub stack one, I don't recognize. So this could be an affiliate, very likely an affiliate that's just promoting it via their own newsletter. Um, and looks like there's some other stuff as well. There's Toolfolio, there's Trustpilot, there's Reddit. So a bunch of sources that we can see this perplexity as well, interesting. So there's a bunch of areas that our startup Blitzit is getting traffic from, which is nice to see. Uh, now, so we've done source, let's go into content too. So content is a specific UTM parameter that you can add. Um, in by choice if you want to add it or not. And we only have one that we're actually using. I don't think we even, if we're using that, I think a partner of ours is using it. You know, one person come from that. So it's not very relevant. Uh, then we have terms. These are like unique IDs. I don't really use them that much. And we have medium as well. So you can see actually here we have, you know, the medium as email, newsletter, and some other mediums, including social. I think I've only intentionally added uh, UTM medium on my emails and I should be really doing it on the other um, kind of sources as well, but I haven't really leveraged the medium as I should be. So that's pretty much the sources. So going on to pages, we have an all view, but we also have this really useful filters for entry. So the first page that someone entered when they first came across the Blitzit website, and then we have exit, the last page that they were on before they left the website very useful stats. This allows me to see if there's an entry point, for example, from any of our other pages other than the home page and our deal pages, because those are obvious. I'm very curious if people are actually finding our organic content. For example, we run articles like the blog section. So apparently we have 29 people visiting our blog for the first time, which is interesting. You know, it could be a backlink somewhere. I'm not sure how people are finding the blog. And the rest of these pages seem to be like help center articles, which is very obvious. What happens is, uh, let me just pull up Blitzit. This is Blitzit, our app, uh, if I expand. So I go into home view uh, on Blitzit, we have this help center button over here. 
So once you click this help center button, it just essentially opens a tab into um, in your browser for the help center. And so that's why it seems to be clear that a lot of people are entering by the help center as well. So yeah, very useful data on pages. Also on hover, you get the percentage value, which is super neat. Uh, and then when you hover off, you get the actual traffic numbers. Really, really neat, very smart. So last two quadrants, very simple. We have countries filtered by countries, which is cool. And it's got a nice scroll to see all the different countries that you're gaining traffic from. It's very clear that Blitzed gets most of its custom base from the United States. And on the right hand side, we have the devices. We have desktop and mobile, and it seems like we get majority of our traffic from desktop, which is a good thing because it's a desktop application. Around 50% of our traffic is first stumbling across the website via mobile, which is not really a bad thing. People can actually sign up for our application. We'll then shoot them an email, giving them instructions on how to download Blitzit and install it on their desktop. So both scenarios work. We've also got some other filters over here, so we can actually filter by browser. Uh, and yeah, of course, yeah, I would have expected Chrome is the top browser. And then we have some other browsers below that. And then we have OS as well. So it seems like most people are rocking iOS phones. And then we have Mac OS, sorry, Windows, and then Android and then Linux. So that's the total amount of traffic coming from these individual devices. The good thing is that Blitzit is available on Mac OS and Windows. So, you know, we just have to make it available for iOS and Android as soon as possible because we're getting some decent numbers of people coming from these devices, right? As you may have noticed, uh, as I'm going through all of this data, I'm taking this information and thinking of it in terms of, you know, how it impacts our startup Blitzit. Uh, as I'm looking at our device statistics, right? As I'm looking at the type of devices we're getting most traffic from the top countries, you know, in the fact that we get most of our users coming from the United States, maybe there's opportunities to focus in other countries. Perhaps these countries have a cohort that are actually paying for our application and, you know, I haven't focused enough attention in these countries. I'm also looking at the potential impact that's coming from our UTMs. You know, what campaign, you know, brought us the most traffic? Um, you know, what referrer brings us the most traffic? And this gives me plenty of insights to double down on specific traffic sources. Now, we've only just started our organic strategy at Blitzit, so we don't have a lot of hits, you know, none mentioned here at all that are coming from our blog articles, but that's okay because the fact that we have this data available, as we grow our organic numbers, we'll come back over here and see, okay, which blog articles have the highest point of entry? And this will give us clarity on you know, what topics we should double down on, which, you know, has the biggest opportunity of bringing us more volume. Now let's get a little bit more advanced. Another cool update that Framer released along with this dashboard is the fact that you can add filters with any data point. For example, let's take our UTM campaign for this particular email, Glorify Blitzit2. This is a cross collaboration that we did. Uh, now, if I click that, now that adds that particular UTM as a filter. So now, I can see how many visitors came through that specific email campaign. Uh, and so we can see clearly we had 241 visitors that came through this particular UTM, this particular email. And as you can scroll down, you've got more insights like, you know, which particular page did they visit, which was in this case, the CTA on the email led people to look at the lifetime deal. And then we have the countries that these people came from, majority of them being from the USA. And then we have Canada and some other countries. Um, and then we can also see what device they came from. Again, here it's a close tie, right? 50-50. 50, 50. 50 came from desktop, 50 from mobile. All this data is super valuable to analyze the success of a particular campaign. We can also filter by date. So instead of actually looking at the last 30 days, maybe you can look at today or the last seven days. And you can even manually choose a date range over here, which is super valuable. Now, the cool thing about all of this is that you as a business owner or marketer have essentially super valuable insights on your visitor data at your fingertips. It's so easy to access, right? You just come to your Framer site, you click the icon and you start playing around with the filters and you can dial into this data. For me, that's a huge value point. Now, saying all of that, does that mean you can kind of throw away your other analytic tools like mixed panel, amplitude, post hog, whatever you're using? If you're specifically a tech company that sells maybe SaaS or applications, uh, and you have other flows that exist outside of your website, then no, I don't think this is going to give you the full picture. It's going to give you a lot of insights on your website traffic, but you still need all those analytic tools to kind of dial down a little bit deeper. For us at Blitzit, um, you know, we need mixed panel because, you know, that gives us 
data on an individual level. So every person that comes to our website gets tracked. You know, we identify them and we have uh, identity management via Mixpanel. So once they give us their email, we actually recognize who they are, what they did on the website, what they did in our application. And that data is really profound for us because we can literally measure the journey of the user from you know entering our website all the way to downloading our application and finally making the purchase. You won't get that obviously from Framers Analytics, but you get a whole lot for quick insights. And I've been noticing myself spending more time on the Framer dashboard, more so than on Mixpanel, because like I said, it gives you very quick and accessible insights right? Mixpanel is a little bit more complex and you have to spend time kind of using their features to write, really narrow down to a particular segment or cohort of users. Uh, and, you know, I still am trying to get to grips with things. So as someone that's not as experienced with this super advanced uh, analytic tools, I'm getting there, but I'm still not there yet. Uh, this is really, really a game changer for me. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for future videos. We'll dive into other aspects of Framer and how I'm using it to build our startups, you know, how we're leveraging Framer for our marketing funnels, there's so much content that I'm planning for 2025 that I believe is going to create a lot of impact for you guys. So do stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then do smash that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time and never stop building.